Build your own custom mini ITX computer. All you need are some simple tools and supplies. I will show you the basic woodworking, metalworking, and computer components that you will need. We will build a wooden box supported by aluminum rails to house a 10th generation Intel CPU on an H470i gaming board by ASUS, an NVMe SSD, and a 300 watt SFX power supply. Here is a list of the supplies for the case. Quarter inch plywood, three quarter inch angle aluminum, one inch square aluminum, and a variety of screws. Make sure the threads match your tap. I use 632nd. The tools include a wood saw, hacksaw, drill, and three in one drill tap countersink. Let's start with the woodworking. We will move on to the metalwork and finally install the hardware. Build your own custom mini ITX computer. Cutting out the panels, take one. All right, so I used some plywood, thin plywood. It was uh, got something nice looking at. Got my square out, draw a line, and right now I'm just cutting it to five and a quarter inches, which is the proper width of the panels. First, I'm gonna cut a nice square end on the panel. Razor blade helps with that last little piece from breaking off. And I've got a plane to smooth out any irregularities from the saw. So now we're gonna do a length, it's gonna be 10 and a quarter. Carpenter Square helps keep it looking like a rectangle when you're done. One of the reasons I chose the plywood is because I didn't have to get any special tools to work with it. I already had a plane, a saw, and I know how to do a little finishing and drill some holes. So here what I'm doing, this is the back panel, and I'm gonna open up a hole for the power supply. So the power supply has an intake fan on the back of it. And I wanna make sure we've got some fresh air coming in. Got my coping saw. Yeah, this would, well, the benefit is, you can see that it's actually pretty easy to work with. And there we go. A whole bunch of slivers, knock those guys off. Good old sandpaper. You gotta be very careful to sand from the top in. If you sand backwards, you end up damaging the thin veneer of the plywood. So it's careful to make sure you're going the right direction. And I got a little different camera angle, but this is me making the front panel. Very similar. You mark it out with a square. Drill some holes at the corners. Come around the corners. And push from the top down. Or really, it's from the outside board in. Knock those guys off. I'm gonna have to spend a little more time making that smooth. And now we're doing the finish. Boiled linseed oil, mixed with mineral spirits, and an old cotton t-shirt. That's one of the bottom panel there. Next we got the front panel. Uh, we put a hole in it for power button. And the two side panels. You can see how nice that color looks once you've got the oil on it. Here they are, all laid out. It was less than a half a sheet of plywood. Putting holes in the rails, take three. So I'm gonna show you how to put some holes in the rails. I've got my angle aluminum here. I've got a nail set. Give it a tap with the hammer. Grab the other side and do the same thing. These holes are gonna be used to attach the wooden panels. So before I drill them, I put a little bit of spray lubricant on there. And I'm going to use a three-in-one drill tap and countersink. So once the drill goes in, take it easy. Uh, it goes slowly when you hit the threads. I 
countersink's just gonna pull the burr off. So here I've got a pan head screw. Those are gonna be used for attaching the panels. And right there I've got a machine head screw with a countersink that's gonna fit nicely flush with the rails. Uh, here I'm doing the countersinking for the square rails that are gonna attach the motherboard. Fits nicely in there. Get those aluminum chips out of the way and we'll move on to the next part. Making the feet. To make the feet, I found a piece of cherry in the garage, laid out a couple of tools and a pencil. I planed it smooth, trimmed it square, and sanded the end smooth. I marked some lines for the feet about three quarter inch square. Drilled four holes, three eighths of an inch wide. Wide enough to access the screw heads after the feet are glued onto the cabinet. I sliced the board to set the height of the feet. Then cut them off. Next, I sanded. For the finish, I mixed half mineral spirits and half boiled linseed oil. Shake it up. Doesn't that shine look good? We have some great components to put into this computer today. ASUS ROG Strix H470i Gaming Board Intel Core i5 10th Gen CPU Silverstone 300W SFX Power Supply For our SSD, we're using a Samsung 970 EVO And we're going to put 16 gigs of RAM in Let's open up the box and see what we have A great looking black anodized motherboard with holographic details First, let's install the SSD. Remove two screws to detach the heatsink. Set aside and grab your SSD. Be sure to install the offset screw, then push it into the M2 slot. Tighten the offset screw. Add the heat sink and reattach with two screws. It's time to put the processor in. Push down on the lever to remove the CPU cover. When installing the CPU, look for a small triangle on the corner of the processor. Line it up with the triangle on the corner of the socket. Put the socket cover down, making sure it goes under the catch screw. Then push the lever down and latch it. The black protective plastic piece will pop off and can be discarded. Next is our RAM. We are using two 8 gig sticks of DDR4. Be sure to line up the notches, then snap them in. Next, we will install the Intel fan. Push in the feet. And attach the power cable to the CPU fan. Let's get out our SFX power supply. It's just the right size for this project. Here is the motherboard with all the components. Here's the 24-pin power port and SATA ports. 
This side has power ports for the CPU fan and the 8-pin power port. On the front panel we have two network ports, five USB ports, including a super speed 3.2 Gen 2 port. It's the red one, Type-C data port and a wireless network antenna hookups. Here is where the graphics card goes. So here we've got all the pieces laid out for our assembly. We've got our angle rails, we've got our computer hardware, the motherboard that we already put together. We've got some motherboard mounting screws, machine head screws, button screws, a couple of truss head screws. We've got our one inch square rails, we've got our wood panels, a couple of basic tools, and so you can see we've got holes, we've got cutouts, and we've got our front panel with the hole drilled for the power button. We've got our back panel with a cutout for the power supply. We've got our top panel, bottom panel. We've got two side panels. Can't wait to see what it looks put together. custom cherry feet so where we're gonna start is with the power supply once again this is an SFX form factor power supply so it is about an inch or two shorter than an ATX in all directions it's got 300 watts plenty of power for what we're doing uh, we could add a decent a mid-grade graphics card and we still should have enough so let's get started so the machine head screws are the ones that fit down into the countersinks they fit flush you'll see why we need that because we're gonna put the back panel right over the top of those heads all right so we're getting started what we're gonna do next is put the one inch square rails on this makes the basis for where the motherboard will be attached. So again, these are the machine head screws that fit in nicely because we are gonna cover these up with the panel as well. So I did two screws on both sides in order to give it a little bit of rigidity. If I only used one, uh, it would slip and slide all right, so we're putting the bottom panel on. That way I can make sure the rails get in the right spot. Got to tuck these wires out of the way. We've got our front panel. Looks like that's going to fit just fine. Got to put that button on. It has a nut that goes in from behind that holds it into place. So we've got the fourth rail on. Gonna put our 24 pin plug in and our eight pin power plug. And that's the top panel going on. Now it's time to tighten everything up. Generally like to leave things a little bit loose as we are making sure everything lines up in the right spot. We've got our rear panel. So these are truss head screws. So just a little bit wider head than the button heads. I had to get a longer screw in order to go through the wood, the aluminum and into the power supply. So I thought I would just try a different head style as well. So these panels on the sides are mainly just held in by tension. Had a couple of different ideas, but I really like the clean look and less screws going through. We're just gonna mock up the wooden feet for a second. Now we're gonna put some glue on it, get those guys locked into place. As you can see, I left a hole so that if I ever need to take the screws out, I don't have to take the feet off. And there we have it. Look at that. That front panel looks really nice in there. Got a nice big push button to turn it on. And I think it's going to look great out in the living room. 
build your own custom mini ITX computer.